This is an older HP ProBook, but in a very bad condition. Actually, it's totally broken. Hey, what's up everyone, I'm Andrew, and in this video, I'm gonna back in function this laptop and make some upgrades. Hey everyone, and this is about a 10 years old laptop, and how you can see, it's in a very bad condition. First let's see what is missing from this laptop. Actually, pretty much is missing. This laptop has no display, no RAM, no disk, the bottom case is broken, no battery, half of the screws are gone, the upper case is broken also, no charger, and all of these things are at the first look. Honestly, I really wasn't sure is this laptop working or not, and I must do some tests. Fortunately, I already have some parts for these older models, like the display that I'm using for testing and the RAM. Also, in this case, I used my universal charger, which I'm using for testing. And now was the moment of true. But fortunately, the laptop started, and honestly, I was really surprised. While making the basic tests, the laptop temperature was very high. The cooling fan was pretty loud and the only thing that is not working is the trackpad. The specs of the laptop are pretty low, but not bad at all. This model has a Core 2 Duo CPU and dedicated 512MB AT Radeon GPU. Well, let's start and give a new life on this laptop. First I will start with teardown. I will separate all components because I need to make a detailed cleaning and some repairs on the case. Well, basically this is all, and now it's time to move on cleaning. First, I started with cleaning the smaller components from the case. And to clean these components, I used a 96% isopropyl alcohol, cotton buds and soft brush. Well, after I finish with the smaller components, I move on the case. The bottom case, the mid case and the top case and few other plastics that are without electronics, literally I wash it using soap and water. Actually, this is the only way to completely remove the dust and make the entire case shines again.
After I finished with cleaning the case, I moved on cleaning the keyboard. To clean the keyboard, I used a soft brush, cotton buds and 96% isopropyl alcohol. If you're going to clean some keyboard, be very careful, because the laptop keyboards are very easy to damage. Especially, be careful to not remove some key, as I did in this video. Because wanting the key again, sometimes it may be very difficult. In this case, the key was damaged previously. But after a few attempts, I managed to back the key on its own place. Also be careful with any kind of liquids. Even a few small drops, including the pure alcohol, may damage the entire keyboard. In this case, clean the keyboard takes a little bit longer, but however, the final result was pretty good. The keyboard is clean and is not sticky and dirty anymore. Well, now after I finished with cleaning the case and some components, it's time to move on case repair. The case is a little bit damaged, but without these repairs, I cannot assemble the laptop. First, I will start with the top case. Here, I will need to stick the screw bolts back to the case. Also, to stick these small bolts, I used a quality super glue gel. If you're going to stick some case using a super glue, then you need to be a very careful and always use some quality glue. Well, after we're done with all these small repairs, let's move on the motherboard. Well, here as usual, first I will start with removing the cooling, and then I will continue with cleaning the motherboard. To clean the motherboard, I used a soft brush, cotton buds and 96% isopropyl alcohol. Well, this is it. The heatsink, the cooling fan and the motherboard are shining again. Well, after all is done here, now it's time to assemble the cooling, place fresh thermal paste and mount the cooling on the motherboard.
Well, now let's move on to the last part about cleaning. The display. This is one of my test displays. I mean the display that I'm using for testing laptops. But in this case, I'm gonna use it to make this laptop fully functional. To clean the display, I will use a few very soft cleaning clothes, a 96% isopropyl alcohol, but mixed with anti-static glass cleaner, soft brushes and cotton buds. Also, if you're going to clean some display, be very careful. Do not press the display hard, because you can easily break it, and do not let any kind of liquid to pass the display sides and corners. Well, basically this is it. And the display is looking good again. And here all is finished with cleaning and small repairs. And now we have a bunch of everything that needs to be assembled, connected to be functional again. Well, now I start with a long assembled journey. Well, basically this is it. The laptop is almost fully assembled, but now let's place the RAM and the disk. The RAM is DDR2, and on this laptop I will install a 4 gigs in total. I think that this laptop can go up to 8 gigs, but this RAM I already have it, and now I will use it on this laptop. And as disk I will use a 120 gigs SSD. 120 gigs is good enough to make this laptop running much faster compared to normal hard disk. 120 gigs is not a large capacity, but is good enough for Windows, basic apps, and some games. Well, after I place the disk and the RAM, it's time to assemble the entire laptop. Well, now it's all finished it, and this is the final result. Now, after all is done, I continue with installing Windows 10, setting up Windows and installing drivers. Basically everything is working fine, except the trackpad, and in this case I had to use a mouse. Windows is working pretty fine, without logs or any other issue. Because of the specs I cannot expect a lot. 
but the basic things are working pretty good. The web browsing is going good without logs. The web pages are loading normally and playing videos on YouTube is going fine also. Because of the specs I cannot play high resolution videos, but HD videos or 720p videos are going without problems. After I'm done with basic testing I move on some games. Because of the low specs I cannot expect a lot from this laptop in this area. I mean to run some new and high graphic games. But the older games are working pretty fine. The first game that I've tried is CS 1.6. This is an older game with a very low requirement. And this game it's perfect for this laptop. The CS 1.6 is running pretty fine without any problem. The frame rate is pretty high. It's about 80 to 100. Actually, you can see that in the bottom right corner on the laptop screen. And personally, I was very surprised. Honestly, I did not expect that. The second game that I play on this laptop is the legendary GTA San Andreas. In San Andreas, I use high graphic settings and HD or 720p resolution. The frame rate in GTA San Andreas is pretty low, mostly it's about 25 to 30. But the game is still playable. And while gaming I didn't have any locks or some other problems. Because I want to test this hardware and the temperatures I install one newer and a little bit heavy game for this laptop. The Tomb Raider. The Tomb Raider actually is running but using all low settings and low screen resolution. The frame rate is very low, it's about 10 or less. This game is running pretty slow, but without crashing or freezing. Also, while testing the temperatures are normal and the laptop is working pretty fine. Because I want to go a little bit further and show something different, I install another operating system. The Android Oreo. Many of these older laptops are capable to run Android without any problems. The Android is a very light and great alternative for these older machines. But in some cases, the only known problem it may be an internet connection, I mean the Wi-Fi. And in this case I had the exact problem. And to fix it there's the two options. To change the Wi-Fi from the inside or to use a USB Wi-Fi dongle. But in this case I've decided to go with USB Wi-Fi dongle. On this machine the Android is working pretty good and fast and much better than I personally expected. And the applications are running pretty well without crashing or freezing. Navigating through Android using a default launcher on the laptop it can be a little bit slow. Because Android is designed for touchscreen devices. And in this case I had to use my mouse as a pointer device. But that is not a big deal. Because Android is highly customizable I install another launcher that provides a desktop experience. And now everything is much better. Actually there is a lot of different launchers that can provide a desktop experience. Now navigating through Android is easy and very simple. And in this case it's almost like a full desktop experience. The web browsing is desktop like also. The web pages are loading fast, I mean same as before, without missing details or anything from the page. Watching videos is desktop like also, I mean YouTube is loading normally and is not a mobile version. However, this laptop can support the other operating systems that are Linux based like Ubuntu and the other older Windows versions. Well, basically this is all about this laptop. This laptop doesn't have some powerful specs but is good enough for some basic use. Like web browsing, watching videos or movies, listening to music, play some older but great games, working with documents and other basic things. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching this video and I hope this video will give an idea and inspiration to back your old touch in function again. Also if you want to support me to grow this channel you can press the subscribe button. 
Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.